Are you ready to make the transition to the right seat of aviation flying? Well, I am too. JPL Aviation is where leadership and aviation take off. There may be only minutes, seconds left of someone's life. Why waste time? It's just a journey through aviation. Where is yours? What is up guys? Welcome to JPL Aviation where leadership and aviation take off and today I have the fun opportunity to learn how to fly from the right side. And let me tell you, this is your center line. This being center line as opposed to this being center line is a huge difference. And why is it a huge difference? Because that one foot, even though it's only one foot, is gonna make a huge difference in your sight picture. Let me tell you whether you're flying a left-hand traffic pattern as opposed to a right-hand traffic pattern, whether you are trying to line up the wheel at the center line. The first thing I did when I started taxiing was I was off to the right. Why I was off to the right? Well, because I was in the right seat and I wasn't used to how that center line looked on my wheel. So the first thing my instructor did, he goes, uh, Justin, your right rivets on that, you know, cow, of your uh, cowl of the airplane, that is going to be your center line. And as much as my mind was like, no, it's not, it's definitely not my center line, I'm gonna review the footage and gonna make sure that that was my center line, in which case it was. Um, another big thing that you're going to notice is like in your steep turns, right? When you're turning to the left, when you're a private pilot and you're sitting in the left PIC seat, you're gonna notice that that is the deep end of the turn, right? So you're making the left and you get used to that sight picture of the top of your cow flap piercing through that, that horizon line. As we know, that is the best way to maintain our altitude as we are turning in our steep turns. So the opposite is gonna be true when you're in the right seat. And the hard part is that I need to get used to is doing a steep turn, because you're literally like this, right? If the door's right here, and I'm a big dude in the Cessna, if the door's right here and I'm going to turn in that steep turn, which is a 50 degree bank, which is commercial maneuvers, which I did today, we'll be going over all that. Um, you're gonna be turning 50 degrees of bank and your arm is literally just gonna be doing this with the yoke as you're putting the bottom of the cow flap this time through of that uh, horizon line, whatever you choose that to be, in order to maintain that altitude. Another big thing I noticed too was on landing, right? So if you're coming into land, you have to align the runway, right? So if this is your runway, you're gonna be off to the right of it. That runway is gonna be on your right shoulder. So for you guys, right, it's gonna be the runway's right here, and now align your shoulder right now with the right, with the, the right side of this. Um, and that's gonna be your, your center line when you're coming into land. Um, landing from the right seat's not that difficult. I was able to nail it pretty well on my first time in regards to the flare and all that. It may be different for you, um, but still make sure that you're looking down at the end of the runway, um, flaring at the right time, really holding out um, holding that nose wheel off the runway as you're going through, that's gonna be a big thing as well. And also maintaining that back pressure all the way through the ground roll. Um, and then maintain that center line obviously off to the right. And up next, you see I have the ACS for the commercial with me. We also went over slow flight installs and he taught me how to do a chandelle. And obviously the chandelle wasn't too bad because I just kind of picked it up after, you know, two, three times of doing it. It's really not that hard. So first let's go over the slow flight installs for the commercial ACS and what you need to know for those. So for the skills section, that's what we're gonna be focusing on today for the ACS is that we're gonna have to clear the area, which we did. Select an entry altitude that will allow the task to be completed no lower than 1,500 feet. AGL for a single engine land, or if you're doing it a multi, because a lot of people do commercial multi, it's gonna be 3,000 feet AGL. Um, establish and maintain an airspeed at which any further increase in angle of attack, increase in load factor, or reduction in power would result in a stall warning. So in my airplane that I was flying today, which is the 172, pretty standard, 55 knots was about my stall speed, and I kept it right above. So at first, I was actually flying around 60 for slow flight, but Matt was like, um, Justin, you need to get slower. And so I was like, oh crap, all right? So I just reduced the power a little bit, still kept the same pitch attitude and um, stayed at 55 and is still able to maintain my altitude, which was nice. Um, uncomp an accomplished coordinated straight and level flight, turns, climbs, and descents with the aircraft configured as specified by the, by the evaluator without a stall warning. Just to go over this again, this is gonna be basically the same thing as is in your private pilot. So you are pitching all the way back, you got the flaps all the way down, you're only gonna be doing 10 to 15 degrees of bank to each side. I would, you know, if you go past 15, you're gonna to be entering a lot of hazardous performance issues. Um, so I'll make sure that you're staying around 10 degrees for your turns. And you're basically just gonna be turning like this, a little bit shallow, and you add power, right? Altitude controls your altitude, I mean airspeed, uh, power controls your uh, your altitude. So if I wanna climb, I'm going to be putting in power, turning a little bit, climbing right turn. 
putting in power, uh, turning left, climbing left turn. Same thing goes for the set. I'm going to be pulling power out a little bit, maintaining that 55 knots, make sure that stall warning horn isn't coming on and off, and you're going to be going all the way down um, to whatever altitude the, the, uh, your instructor tells you to go, or your designated pilot examiner, one or the other. So, um, and the limitations for this maneuver is maintain the specified altitude, plus or minus 50 feet, specified heading, plus or minus 10 degrees airspeed, and plus, or, uh, plus 5 knots, oh, so it's actually plus 5 minus 0 knots. So making sure that you're staying 55 to 60 is very important because the site can go below that 55. Technically, that's out of uh, toler tolerances for um, the commercial standards. And the specified angle of, angle of bank, which plus or minus 5 degrees, um, stay 10 to 15 and you're going to be fine. And also maintain that plus or minus 50 feet. That's the big thing. So that's maneuvering during slow flight, right? So up next, after this, we did slow flight, and after slow flight, we did the stalls. And first up was the power off stall. Um, and for the power off stall here, we're going to go to the skills section in my ACS. Make sure you read your ACS before you go do your commercial ride. Um, for step one was clear the area. Uh, step two is select an entry altitude that allow the task to be completed, completed no lower than 1,500 feet AGL. Um, configure the airplane in the approach or landing configuration as specified by the evaluator and maintain coordinated flight throughout the maneuver. All right, so here we go. Let's stop. Landing configuration, right? A slow flight, the whole purpose of this is that we're going to be simulating as if we're coming into land, right? We got that slow airspeed coming in. You know, granted, you may not be at 55 knots, but you're going to be at 55 knots for these maneuvers, all right? Um, you're going to be coming in, establish, you know, underneath the white arc, start putting those flaps down, get all the way down to 30 once you're there, and maintain that, you know, 55 knots, slowly pull back the power a little bit, and get that 500 foot per minute, just, just ease it on down descent rate. Once you're there, that is when you're going to pull back on the yoke, and the nose is going to pull up and you're going to stall and you go full power recover from it that's exactly what they want to see for the power off stalls but let's get into the specifics of the power off stall for the commercial acs um, so you establish a stabilized descent, which we talked about. Transition smoothly from the approach or landing attitude to a pitch attitude that will induce a stall let me say that again. Transition smoothly, keyword, from approach or landing attitude, which we talked about, to a pitch attitude that will induce a stall. So basically that just means slowly pull back on the yoke and that nose will start to come up, well bam, there's your stall. Maintain a specified heading, plus or minus 10 degrees, if in straight flight, you know, pick south, you know, you got 190 and 170. Uh, maintain a specified angle of bank, not to exceed 20 degrees. So when you are turning, if he wants to, you to do a turning power off stall, you gotta be not to exceed 20, uh, 20 degrees, and or plus or minus five degrees, if in turning flight, until an impending or full stall occurs as specified by the evaluator. Acknowledge the cues at the first indication of a stall. Recover at the first indication of a stall, or after a full, star ha full stall has occurred as specified by, by the evaluator. So what, in your private pilot, what do you do? You stall that thing, you know? For my instructor, when I was a private pilot, um, what he did, he like really made me stall the aircraft. We went up and went, whoop, boosh, you know? Um, had a little bit of fun with it. And uh, other people who I went up with during my private pilot days or after I got my private pilot when we were practicing stalls, they're like, holy crap, you stall the aircraft really, really hard. And that's kind of like a gray area of how hard you're supposed to stall the aircraft. Make sure you ask your DPE before you go for your private um, ride because, you know, you don't want to scare the crap out of him if you stall it too hard. Two, for your commercial, no, not at all. What you're going to do is you're going to go to that first sound of the buzzer. You know, when you hear that, recover. It's not that hard. And two, configure the airplane as recommended by the manufacturer and accelerate to VX or VY after you recover. Return to the altitude heading and airspeed specified by the evaluator. So, sounds like it's pretty straightforward, right? Get yourself set up. Go down 500 foot per minute descent. Pull back on the yoke a little bit. Stall, recover, and maintain that heading and you'll be good to go. Last one would be the power on stalls for our stalls. Our skill entry area is going to be clearing the area. Step one, always make sure you clear the areas. Nine degrees to the right, nine degrees to the left. Go back to center, start your maneuver. Two, select an entry altitude that will allow the task to be completed no lower than 1,500 feet AGL um, and 3,000 feet if you're doing a multi once again. Establish the takeoff, departure, or cruise configuration as specified by the evaluator and maintain coordinated flight throughout the maneuver. So whatever your evaluator wants the configuration to be, you are going to do. It's not going to be slow flight, however. So you're going to set power as assigned by the evaluator to no less than 65% horsepower. Usually this is around, you know, pull it back to 1,600, 1,700 RPM, sometimes 1,500 
um, because that's going to allow you to kind of slow the aircraft down to kind of get in that pitch up attitude. Um, transition smoothly from the takeoff or departure attitude to a pitch attitude that will induce a stall. So basically, right, power on stalls, as we learned in our private pilot, was for when we are taken off out of an airport, and instead of hitting that 74 or whatever airspeed we're shooting for, we are talking to our buddy, next thing we know, we pull up too high and we have to recover from that stall, hopefully with some altitude underneath us. So if we're maintaining a specific heading, um, plus or minus 10 degrees, if in straight flight, maintain a specified angle of bake not to exceed 20 degrees, plus or minus 10 degrees if in turning flight. So once again, they could have you do a turning stall if the DPA, DPE really wanted to mess with you. Um, and until an impending or full stall is reached, as specified by the evaluator. Acknowledge the cues at the first indication of a stall, you know, the airplane buffet or stall horn, and recover at the first indication of a stall or after a full stall has occurred, specified by the evaluator. So once again, what are we doing? We are doing the private pilot maneuver only until that stall horn goes. Only until that stall horn goes is what you are doing for your commercial maneuvers. You're gonna configure the airplane as recommended by the manufacturer after you recover and accelerate to VX or VY. Return to the altitude heading and airspeed specified by the evaluator. So basically what we're gonna do, the magical pen airplane. Coming along, you're gonna be you know, simulating takeoff. Here we go, 70, you know, 70 knots or whatever, 1600 RPM, pulling back. Um, and once you get to about here, you're gonna go full power, pull back and drop. And the second you hear that stall horn, you're not actually gonna drop, you're gonna hear that horn and then accelerate through it. So once again, here we are, gonna be setting that power 65%, uh, you know, get the airplane pitched up really, really low. Uh, on my airspeed indicator, put that full power in, go up a little bit, stall, don't completely stall, hear the horn, recover, and sweep yourself back out. Try not to lose a ton of altitude and butcher your headings. So um, that'll be it for the slow flight power on stalls, guys. That's pretty fun stuff. But now, bum, 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 the commercial maneuver, the Shondell. Honestly, it was kind of my bad. I figured we were gonna do a maneuver today. In my head, I was kind of like, eh, we might do a lazy eight. So I actually did a presentation on that for uh, my OCC uh, commercial flight class. So I had a little bit of knowledge on that one, but he ended up doing a Shondell and luckily I was able to look at what a Shondell was. So I had a good idea of it, but I should have done more research on all the maneuvers before, before I showed up for this flight because I honestly was not as prepared as I could have been. So I hope you guys can realize that in the video. Um, I think it took me about two to three times to get it. So basically the purpose of Shondells, it's gonna be aerodynamics associated with Shondells to include coordinated and uncoordinated to flight, overbanking tendencies, maneuvering speed, including the impact of weight changes, accelerated stalls, appropriate airplane configuration for maximum performance climb, and proper pitch control required for continuously decreasing airspeed. So basically the main skills of this is that you're gonna clear the area, select an altitude that will allow the maneuver to be formed no lower than 1500 feet above ground level. So basically what a Shondell is first though, before we get into this, what I learned is that you're gonna be going straight like this, and then you are going to be putting in 30 degrees of bank. You're gonna be going full power to get yourself out of a box, pitch up until you get about 55 knots, and you're gonna go completely 180 degrees, you're getting about 400, 500 feet of altitude. So I'll do it from down here, right? Here you are, 30 degrees of bank, whoop, 30 degrees of bank, put in full power, you're coming up and over 55 knots all the way up until you hear that stall horn at south, at, uh, south is uh, what your heading was. So for me, it was like north, you turn south, 180 degrees. Whatever that is for you, just make sure that you mark it down while you're doing it. So number three, establish the appropriate entry configuration, power and airspeed. Establish the bank angle at approximately 30 degrees. So what my instructor taught me today was that you, I was getting confused honestly in the video if you watched, cause I was asking him, I was like, you know, like what, are, don't you like slowly turn into it? Cause I was like trying to think of, you know, lazy eights that you kind of like slowly put in the bank. But in this one, you actually, 30 degrees full power, and you're just going for it. So it's a little bit different. Um, you simultaneously apply power and pitch to maintain a smooth coordinated climbing turn in either direction to the 90 degree point with a constant bank and continuously decreasing airspeed. So keywords are continuous bank and constantly decreasing airspeed, right? Because if I'm here and I put in full power, 
and I do 30 degrees of bank, right? That aircraft is naturally going to climb. The more you accelerate that aircraft, it's going to have airflow flowing over the wings equals lift equals energy. You're going to be turning up and over and whether you like it or not, you're going to climb in a turn. And so once you climb in that turn, the goal is actually to get it to 55 knots and maximum rate of climb, get yourself out of there. Um, and that box is what they call it. I gained about 400 to 500 feet altitude um, each time. And Matt said that was good. So I guess that's what the commercial maneuver um, would be a good range for you if you're in a 172, 160 horsepower. So being coordinated at a constant rate rollout from 90 degrees point to the 180 point, maintaining power and constant pitch attitude. So once you hit that you know if you're going north and you hit that south heading make sure you maintain that 55 what i did i think on the second time was after i did it i turned i came through um and then i turned to south and just leveled out instead of coming through turning and maintaining that pitch which i fixed later on so you're completing the rollout at 180 degrees you know your point whatever that is north south pick cardinal heading makes it easy um plus or minus 10 degrees just above stall airspeed and maintaining that airspeed momentarily avoiding a stall. So you resume straight level flight with a minimum loss of altitude. So the whole point is that you're in this box, right? Box. Boop, 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 boop. You're coming through. You go, oh crap, there's a box. What I what do I gotta do? I gotta get out of this box. And so you get yourself in the box, you go full power, 30 degrees of bank. You're coming through, up, up, up out and you're going to maintain that 55 knots just after you hit that opposite direction whatever you know 180 degree point you pick and you're going to be at 55 knots hold it for a second and level out and keep going so it's basically just a performance maneuver you know think dog fighting style to get yourself up and out of there and facing the opposite direction so that is basically i would say the biggest notes from what happened in my lesson today um, right seat flying is going to be pretty straightforward just make sure that everything is shifted off to um, the left a little bit which means that your right shoulder will be more aligned with things as you fly in the right seat. Um, enjoy the video guys and let me know your comments, thoughts. Please share it with somebody if you found any of this information valuable. Thanks. All right, radios check, set. Check. Loud and clear. Transponder 1200 mode altitude. Flaps going to go up. Visually left and right are up. Make sure lean for taxi. Wait for this to start up here. Half left, half up. 121.8. Doors shut, nice. Hold the ground, Cessna 80238 to the general fuel pumps with information hotel. Looking at taxi 24 run up. Cessna 80238 on ground. I'm on runway 6, but I'm going to switch to runway 24 at the next ADIS, which is in about 5 minutes. So taxi to the runway 24 run up area via Alpha. Two for run up area via Alpha, 80238. All right, your controls, my controls. Park brakes off, good to go. Yeah, Alpha. Centurion 7, Lima Victor, frequency change approved. Talk to you soon. Frequency change approved. All right, clear left. All right, clear left. Okay. Good. So, center line for you. Look at your rivets on the engine cowling right here at the top. Line that up with the yellow line over here. So, I'll show you where the nose tire is at. Your bit, yours is going to be like right about. Here, this is where the nose tire is at. So just keep that side picture right here. Look down here by the engine, look up in front of you. That's where you're going to keep it nice and centered up. As far as um, maneuvers, we're going to try steep turns. Now, to get you ready for commercial, we're going to start doing it's now going to be 50 degrees. And you're going to see a five degree bank hang difference is a huge difference. You're going to have to pull up a lot more. Now it's gonna be it's gonna be a little rough being in the right seat, especially because not only you're learning on 50 degrees now, you're always looking for the right seat, so it's gonna take a little bit of practice. Uh, 
800 parking brake. Checklist, you got it. All right, uh, before takeoff, doors are closed, latched, brakes on. Brake, good, brakes good. Flight controls. On. Flight controls. Three and correct, down, up, down, up, left, right, cool. Okay, uh, flight instruments, airspeed, zero, attitude indicator, wind is level, or not more, air, must plus or minus five. Altimeter is set, vertical speed indicators at zero, magnetic compass reads about two, five, zero. Two, five, zero, turn coordinator, wind level, ball center, flight instruments are checked. Fuel selector valve, both. Make sure, Rich. Trim, set for takeoff here, power 1700. Back check. 50 drop. Give it a couple seconds, stabilize here. 50 drop, back to both, carpet check. Drop about 20. Okay, engine instruments, oil pressure in green, oil temperature still warming up. Um, ammeter check. Oops. Discharge over here. And positive charge. Suction gauge reads about 4.8. That's checked. Um, suction, and we got that for idle check. Also, car heat on as well. Looks healthy there. Doesn't go below 500 RPM. Back to 1,000. Throttle friction is adjusted. Lights, taxi line, nav beacon run. All right, run complete. I'll wait for the Garmin to yeah. reset. <laughs> Buzz or file into two, zero, two, nice. Cool, ready? Forward and ground, eight, zero, two, three, eight, run up complete. If I was transmitting. System 238, wind 2903, runway 24, taxi via Alpha. 24, taxi via Alpha, 238. All right, parking brake off. Taxi. Trim set for takeoff. Trim set for takeoff, yeah. Um, you're gonna ask for a right down wind departure. Pull the ground eight zero two three. We're uh, we'll be looking for a right down wind departure. Oh, let's see. Let's gonna switch over to tower. Yeah. Attention, Larka, Fullerton Airport. Information: India current wind two nine zero three. Altimeter two nine nine eight. Just eight zero two three eight Fullerton Tower, right down, approved runway two four, cleared for takeoff. Two four, cleared for takeoff. Two three eight. All right, Mission Scout Rich, trim set. Okay, on um, both. Four takeoff check is complete. Good. Flaps are up. All right. Finals looking clear. Good there. Lights are all good. Nav text light. Watch out for the bird. Okay, so center line. RPM 2000, engine instruments are on the green, full power. Okay, your center line's right. Yeah, you got center line good right here. Especially when it comes to commercial, I want to make sure that I'm uh, using a lot of sight picture instead of instruments, you know. Yeah, man, for sure. Especially for your, especially for the maneuvers. You don't want to be looking inside the cockpit. All right, 500 feet, starting the right turn.
We'll go 2,500. That's two, 3,500. So stay on the downwind for a second here, and then I'll give you a head and fly a bit. I was literally just here like seven hours ago doing pattern work. Nice. Freaking tired. <laughs> I have like like eight hours of flight time scheduled today too. <clears throat> Life of flight instructor, man. Just nonstop. Good though. Yeah. Can't complain. Okay, so uh, turn left, zero three zero. We should, have, we should have this practice area all to ourselves. Everyone's scared to go fly right now. <laughs> True. Oh. It's not even that bad. See? It's really not actually at all. Yeah, it's just the smoke. People don't want to. Well, actually, like it was actually a little bit worse earlier this week. Like, uh, cabin air is off, but it's still pumping in. There you go. Yeah. Yours, yours isn't shut, huh? Yeah, I actually like a little breeze, anyways, even though it's smoky. Shutdown two three eight frequency change approved. Frequency change approved to there. Thanks. Uh, practice frequency. Yeah, twenty three point three. Look at that, man. It's all freaking. It's not even that bad right now. Actually, like well, out earlier, yeah. earlier this week, it was just, the mountain just completely covered up. I think they're starting kind of starting to control it now. My car, though, I live like a dime bar, just kind of where, where we're going right now. Yeah. Like every morning, this car just filled with ash. It's nice. crazy. I was I was thinking all the detailer guys are gonna be having a ton of work coming up. Oh, for sure. Engine settings, so like 1900 and around 100 knots for uh, steep turns. And it's playing typically around like 90 knots for your steep turns. Right. 90, yeah, uh, it's a little bit less power in this engine. 50 degrees of bank, so in between the middle, between the 30 and the 60, and a little bit more, so about 50 degrees. And you're gonna see the difference. 50 degrees definitely, so you definitely have to pull up more. Commercial's 50 degrees of bank for yeah. steep turn. Oh. I thought it was 60. That's no, 50. Oh. I gotta do more reading on my. Yeah, 60 would be crazy. I think that's ATP. That was one of them 60. 60 degrees of bank. Maybe it's ATP. Maha practice area, Cessna 8023H, just about three miles south of the Bono Freeway, 3,500 heading north of Bono Freeway. It's so tempting to keep looking over there, but I don't want to. So big thing right now, especially when you're going back, when you're going back to your visual maneuvers, yeah. even if you're private, just look at visual references out in front of you. Like, look at your mountain peaks, 
Use something out in front of you, keep the nose of that, it's going to help you keep your heading. You don't have to keep staring at your instruments all the time. It's, like it's going to be very helpful for your steep turn. It's going to be very helpful for your power off and your power on spells, also for your slow flight. Because you for those for those three, yeah. you have to be you always have to keep your heading. So just find something out in the distance to help you use as a ground reference, and it helps you keep your route so you don't have to stare at your heading indicator. hard for you to hold right now too because you have power like a 25. Just keep it like a 22, it's going to help you keep it, it's going to be a lot more stable. Oh, what straight level is visually is so, so long forgotten. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so now once you get yourself stable, do a clearing turn, left and right, and let's just do steep turns. To the right. Ninety degrees, don't see anybody. Clear left. Um. Don't see anybody. Yep, it was clear to me. Alright, so put yourself on a heading here of 030, or just find something to help you as a reference. Use that bouncing peak right here, you can have it right yeah. in front of you. It's pretty much a heading of about 010. So 010, 3,600 feet, 50 degrees of bank, whichever whichever tree you want to start left or right, so it's fine. Alright. Already at the power setting configured for it. Okay. So we go two, three, and down. Yeah, okay, there's 50 right there, so hold it right there. Don't pull too much because you're going to get slow. You're at 65 knots right now. I lost. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're at 35 degrees of bank, so pitch it. Got to pitch it more. You're at 35. Hey, the, I was trying to find the sight picture first. 45. Go one zero. And... A different feeling for sure. Yep. Okay, so we dropped about one. We talked about 150. On the one to the left, we we kept it like a 35. I know you're trying to find it right now. Yeah, I got. I'm trying to figure out where 50 is on the horizon to pick that point right yeah. now. Yeah. So <coughs> find it. It's it's really hard to find it like that. Just look at it at your head attitude First. indicator. Keep it there at 50, and just use that muscle memory to keep it there. Okay. It's gonna make it much easier. So let's try it again. Let's keep it here at 360. Let's just keep it at 3,500. So use your attitude indicator, establish here at 50, and use that muscle memory just to keep it right there. And you can just always just look back every few seconds at your attitude indicator. This commercial is supposed to be visual. It definitely has to be visual, but yet you can use it as a reference. So check it here at 50, and then keep looking outside from here. Every few seconds, look over here, then look outside. Okay, more bank. You're at 40 right now. There you go, that's what you want right there, 50 degrees. Yeah, that one. Uh, at altitude. Okay, at 60, 50 right there, there you go. It's weird from the right seat, for sure. Those are off. 
Okay, he kept it plus or minus 100, a little bit off of the heading there. Because the goal is to get it trimmed out so that it just you can hands off fly it, right? At fifth, because that's the steep turn. You can get it where it's just you just turn it and it goes by itself. Uh, I, I haven't really taught that way. Um, I, I just kind of I just show it as like keep it at 45 degrees. Look outside. You just use that muscle memory to keep it there. Every few, every few seconds, just look at your attitude indicator. Make sure you're holding it. You want to do it at 40, uh, the 50, so I can kind of see. Yeah. It. All right. So I can just look out the whole time. My controls. Your controls. Okay, left and right both look clear. <coughs> Power here, starts to the left first. Okay, 50 degrees of bank right there, just gonna hold back. That's right at 50 right there. Oh. I'm going to do full two, three, full 60s for you so you can get that side picture for you. That's right at 50. Cool. The right one is the one that feels really weird. Yep. All right, we'll go to the right now. Climb in a little bit. I'm actually just gonna relieve that pressure on the yoke a little bit. Let it naturally drop down and then catch it back at 35. And I'm not like changing my bank lock, I'm just keeping it here at 50, using that muscle memory to keep it there. Alright, your controls. Controls. Alright, right side. Yeah, don't accelerate, stall it. It's definitely going to take some time because you're learning commercial maneuvers and you're also doing it from the right seat, so it's like a double whammy. That was the... Okay, uh, alright, good. You kept it with plus or minus 100, okay. 50 is right there, hold it right there. A little bit less, a little bit less bank. Less bank. Right, right there, just use that muscle memory to keep it right there at 50. That's where you want it, right there. I'm just looking outside. Yeah. I will right, we'll go back yeah, to the left. Yeah, you, you've held it at 50 this whole time, right? It's good. Uh, practice area 80238 is over the Industry Hills Golf Course, 3,600 steep turns. All right, you're, you're, you're definitely holding the bank better. The altitude we're climbing that, that time, so. I think that's a trim. Should yeah. definitely could be the trim, because you, you gave it like three rolls up, too. Go back down at 3.5. Are we still good? Yeah, you're good on airspace. Back down at 3.5. Uh, keep it at 21, go nose up twice, and right. A little bit more bank, 
about another five degrees to the left. Right there. And you see right when you add that extra five, you start you start to drop. Right there's where you want it. A little bit more. Right there. Alright, good. Hold an altitude there. Okay, roll out. Pitch nose down so you don't climb. Climb. Alright, back to the right. Definitely, it's definitely getting better. Your bus, you're, you're just out of it, but you're get, definitely getting better. You're holding your bank angle a lot better. So it's all about the side picture. Keeping that 50 degrees of muscle memory to keep it there. All right, let's move on to another one. Let's turn it back over here so we we'll get too close to these fires. Out of TFR, staying out. Yeah. Let's do, uh, let's do slow. Actually, I'm going to introduce to you the actual when stalls now. Actually, stalls are much easier now, commercial. It's first indication, so you don't have to go to a full stall. Once you hear a stall warning, when you recover. Oh. Yeah, commercial stalls are much easier. So the same thing, plus or minus 10. Once you hear the stall warning horn, you recover. So that's your, your try power off stall. Do you remember how to do the steps? You want yeah, to refresh yeah. you? Okay. All right, so one eight, let's do one heading 180. All right. Power off stall first. Get coordinator first. Two, one, zero. All right. 180. Level. All right. So first things first, we are under the white arc actually. So we good. We go down to flaps. Ten. I'll pull back power a little bit. About 1800, 1700. Slow ourselves down more, and we're gonna go flaps. Twenty. Heading, and then we're gonna go flaps. Thirty. Get that nose down. Maintain slow flights. And it's still at 3,500. And this would be slow flight. Alright, flaps down, flaps 30. They're not down all the way out. There we go. Yeah. Um, and I'm doing the stall, right? Yeah, so do power off stall. So do your stabilized descent and then power out. So yeah, we're going to go stabilized descent. About yeah, 1,500 RPM and get it at 500 feet per minute. All right. We are still 180, and then we pull back. Power all the way out. Power all the way out, pull back. The first indication. First indication, right? No, you didn't hear the stall horn yet. There, uh, there it is. Uh, all right, so once you hear it, then you push it forward. Four. Okay, keep your heading. Start slowly taking your flaps out. 20. And then once you get to 10, positive rate of climb to get the altitude that you lost. 10. Positive rate, good. And then zero. Zero. Simple as that, man. Commercial stalls are really easy. All right, all right, let's try power on stall now. All right, power on stall. That's easy. So we're gonna go back to 1800. As if we're taking off. Go back. Well, down to like 55. Once we get here, then we go full power. There it is. First indication. Yep. That's back. It's literally that simple. All right, cool. Let's um, slow flight. So now slow flight, the difference in your commercial is instead of plus or minus 100 altitude, you now have plus or minus 50. Also, airspeed plus 5 minus 0 instead of plus 10 minus 0. Oh. So set yourself up for slow flight. We're heading 180, 3,500. All right, we're under, we're going to go 22,000. Under whites, flaps 10. South. So 1600, get ourselves down, 20, 30, slow ourselves up. About 2000 RPM, and just slow flights. Like so, I need to go down, I'll drop some power. Slow 
slow down a little bit more. You're at 60 right now. Oh, what's supposed to be at 55? About 50, 55, yeah. You want to be just above the stall horns, around 50. Okay, I like that. Right, yeah, good. At 8,500. All right, good. Just to the left, turn 150. Go slight indication, 10 degrees of bank. 150. One five zero. Good. Right back to two one zero. Right back to one zero. Uh oh. Good. All right. Go ahead and recover. Right, so I'm gonna go full power. Those pops coming up ten. No, the same same altitude. Yep. Same altitude, and once we get pops coming up past ten. Yeah, and three thousand five hundred. All right, good. My controls. Air controls. All right. Um, we're going to do, I'm going to show you one commercial maneuver and then we're going to head back for landings. All right. I'm going to get down here because I'm going to show, you, I'm going to show you what a chandelle is. So a chandelle is you're basically... About 90 degrees turning 180. 90 degree turn, minimum controllable airspeed. <coughs> what, I mean by minim, what I mean by minimum controllable airspeed is you're literally riding that stall horn all the way through. And you're basically what it is, an old school war, war maneuver. You're basically stuck in a box canyon, full 180 to get out of it. So... Um, the biggest thing on this is just you keep your minimum control where so you want to hear that stall, you want to ride that stall warning horn the whole way through. Also, you want to keep us or minus 10 on your heading. So, I'm going to purposely get us down a little bit because Bravo is at 4,000 and we, you climb a good amount of altitude here, so I'm going to keep it at 3,000 feet. Laja practice area 8023, it's over the freeway 3,000 Shendos. Okay, so I'm going to keep it, I'm going to turn to a heading of uh, 360. Where to go 180 south? Yeah, 180 to the south. So clear What's the power setting clear, for right? it? Full power. So you're just going to go full power all the way up. Full power all the way up at 30 degrees of bank. Minimum controllable airspeed. And you're going to keep that minimum controllable airspeed all the way up to the 180. So even you're going to have to keep that pitch up attitude. And then you, once you get to 20, then you start to pitch it back down. So I'll, I'll demonstrate it for you. You don't go right to 30 though, right? When you first start turning. Yep, I do. I go full power right to 30. And keep, some, keep pitching it up. All right. Clear above me here. Full power. I also want to stay coordinated on this maneuver too. 30 degrees, pitch up. So you just hold that stall horn over here, you keep that pitch attitude. As you get to 180, you're gonna keep that pitch attitude up like that. Keep riding that stall horn. As you get to 180, then you can start to bring it down. Plus or minus 10 on your heading, slowly bring it down. Power about 2,000. All right. Drops back down, you can try it. Your controls. Your controls. Your controls. All right, so let's turn it back 360. We'll do it to the left first. So once you're stabilized, full power, 30 degrees of bank to the left. Thousand. All right. Straight level. Stretch full power. Thirty degrees. Okay, good. There you go. Pitch it up like that. Hold it there. We got fifty-five, right? More pitch up. Hear that stall warning horn. There you go. Hold that stall warning horn. A little bit more. I, I, you won't stall. I promise you. Just hold it back a little bit more. Uh. Okay. Once you get three hundred and sixty, keep that pitch attitude up. You want to keep hearing that stall warning horn. To right here, and then once you're there, then you can slowly bring it down. And there you go, climb about 500 feet per minute in about 20 seconds. So how do you know when to stop? Once you're once you're at your heading. Oh. Once you're at, so you're going to keep that attitude. You want to hear that stall warning horn the whole way through. Keep it all the way up until you get to your 180 heading. Then you can bring it down. So pretty simple, right? Let's try one more. Let's go back down a little bit. Let's try one to the right. Stay. Uh, practice area 80238 is over at the Industry Hills Golf Course, 3,300 Shendos.
going to the right, you're going to stay a little more coordinated. Alright. <coughs> Alright, cool. So, we're on just heading uh, north and start it off to the right. Right to 30 degrees, pitch up. up a little bit more. There you go. A little bit less bank. Stay coordinated, right rudder. Got to pitch it up more. There you go. Hold it right there. And once you get to 180, level the wings. Keep that pitch attitude up. You want to keep hearing that stall horn. There you go. Then once you're at your heading, then you can slowly bring it down. There you go. Climb about 500. That's what you want to see. There you go. Simple as that. Cool? Interesting. Okay. All right. Let's go back to Fullerton. KFUL, direct to. Hazardous weather, Southern California region available on flight service frequencies. Advise on initial contact, you have information, India. India, uh, 2,500. Fullerton Airport information, India, time 1453 Zulu, wind 2903, visibility 10, sky clear, temperature 18, 2.13, altimeter 2998. VOR Alpha approaching use, landing departing runway 24. Airman's advised reuse caution for personnel equipment working adjacent to... Cool. All right, you can let them know we are about, let's see, right now we're saying we're about eight miles to the north. Forward at tower 8023. Going Fullerton ground, say again. Fullerton Tower, 80238. Cessna 8023, Fullerton Tower. Fullerton Tower, 0238, we're 8 miles to the north with uh, India and Balfour 24. Cessna 238, enter right base for runway 24. Right base for runway 24, 238, we'll do a couple laps of the pattern. Alright, so you know, we're pretty much fine direct there now. Oh yeah, I see it. Right base for two four. Well, I'm off momentarily over this. So hill. the the, big, the biggest thing with your landing is, is you're gonna have a, switching to the right seat. You're gonna have a tendency to pull to the right. So keep your wings level over here. Also, as the student pilot in the left seat, they, they have to use more left, we have to use more right rudder to keep keep the nose center right. Yeah. Now it's going to be the opposite. If you're seeing the right seat, you're going to want to tend to pull to the right, so the nose want to go to the right. So you have to use left rudder to keep the center. We can extend our downwind base, our uh, base out a little bit, so it'll give me more alignment room. Yeah. Sounds like we're the right here. Where we're at is actually pretty good. Uh, we there's that baseball field right over there. Yeah, Typically, yeah. that's where you turn base. If so we keep it right here, where you are, you're a little bit more extended out base. So you're you're fine right here. Fields off to the right. Yep.
You can just see that that layer hanging around by John Wayne. Yeah. Cessna 238, runway 24, cleared to land. 24, cleared to land, 238. Nope. Lights, flaps gonna go. Twenty. It'll be good after this one too to get like a normal pattern in. Yeah. If it's just stand a little bit quicker, we're gonna come in pretty high. We're gonna be pretty much like at like seven hundred by the time you turn final. Unfortunate, our landing traffic hold short, runway 24. Hold short 24, CHP 51. We'll be fine. Alright. So, line it up here. I'm going to show you a side picture. So, right now, you're a little bit to the right. So, bring it over here to your left. I'm going to I'm gonna line you up for the center line. I think I got it. Left rudder. There you go. That's, that's center right there. So just focus on that side picture right there. That's what you're looking at for center. Left rudder. We're a little bit off to the right. Left dealer on to the left. Pitch the nose down just slightly. There you go. A little more left rudder. Yeah, there you go. Hold it there. Okay, power out. Back to the left here. And round out right about here. Okay, just hold it off. Hold it off. Right, not bad. Oh, full stop. I'll go. Let's we have it enough for my yeah, let's make a let's make a go here. Power eight zero two three eight off for that go, taxi back to two four. It's just a two three eight, normally it's a right hand turn off uh, for taxi back. Runway two four taxi via alpha. Two four taxi via alpha two three eight. Uh, oh, it's a right turn? Yeah. C so speed five one, right turn approved, runway two four clip to take off. I got two four, CHP five one. Okay, after landing, taxi light's gonna go on. Make sure you lean for taxi. Car beats off. Flaps are up, and first landing here. Taxi clearance has got. We got that. So not bad on that one. Um, as you see, it, it never fails. When you're sitting in the right seat, you tend to want to pull to the right a little bit. Oh, right so longitudinally, just a little bit more to the left, and then nose is kind of yawing to the right a little bit. So just a little bit more left aileron, left rudder. Everything else is fine. Your, your, your landing was just good. So it's just a side picture thing. It takes about a couple hours for you to get, get back and do it. And if I was efficient with it, if I was too much to the left. I mean, yeah, too much to the left. I would have been. I would have figured it out as I got closer to the ground. Yeah. Why is it a taxiway turn off to the right? I've never, I don't know why. All well, the people that just return for pattern work, they go to the right. Is that a here thing or is that an everywhere thing? It's some, some airports do the same thing. Uh, 
General Aviation Tug, Fortin Ground, proceed on Charlie Cross, runway 24. It'll be right close traffic. Port and Tower 8328, hold short out. Alpha 2-4, right close traffic. Cessna 238, make right close traffic. Runway 24, cleared for takeoff. Right close traffic, 24, cleared for takeoff, 2 3 Gave me the slow speech treatment. Yeah. Up, make stretch both. Go back center line. The runway easier from this side. Oh, for sure, yeah. See it much easier. CHP 5 1 frequency change approves. CHP 5 1 Roger. Just inside the baseball field. Give yourself a little bit more room just so you can practice it a little bit. Cut it in too tight. There, right there's good.
Alrighty. All right, so now go get 30. All right, so keep the nose down here. Keep your airspeed at 65. Your, your side picture, I'm going to line you up for the center. Right right here, center. That's what, that's what you're looking at. That's good there. Okay, left cutter here. Okay, power out over the train tracks. Pitch down a little bit, coming a little slow. Okay, Stop's coming up. up. Right, that's to the left. Full power. Yeah, we didn't get touch and goes. Pull, 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 power out, power out, power out, power out. Power out? Yeah, we didn't get touch and goes. Oh. We, didn't, we weren't clear for a touch and go. Alright, so do you want to try it again one more time? Yeah, yeah. Right, right, 77, right, 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 ground, proceed on Charlie and cross runway 24. You, you gotta get clear for a touch and go, you can yeah. On the box track. Yeah, right here, box track. Point of ground, it's 28 off box track, test spec. Cessna 238. Wind calm, runway 24, taxi via Bravo. 24, taxi via Bravo, 238. Yeah, you gotta get clear for a touch and go, you can't just, you can't do that. If it clears your land, you gotta, you gotta full stop it. If you can touch and go, then you can do it. We didn't request to touch and go. Yeah. Yeah, that's why it's always good to bring somebody with you. So, um... That was, that, that was actually pretty good. Just, it's, it, I, I can just tell with you, it's not going to take you very long. It's just going to just be a little bit of better center line. And just, it's just natural. It's just going to take a little bit more of a better sight picture. The more repetition you do it. Uh, just let me get it aligned first, you know? Let yeah. me, that's part of the process is having me get it there. Because I, 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 I know what I'm aiming for after that first time. It's just like, I got to get it there. Gotcha. <clears throat> How are we doing time-wise? Yeah, not time for like one more. Like this isn't center line right now, it's off to the right. You're off a little bit to the right. Turn like right there, center line. Right there, center line. Keep the rivets of the engine cowling on, on your on your yellow lines there. That's when you keep your center line. That would be like center. That's like my rivet over here. On you're looking at this one over here to your right. Like right there. So, because for me it feels like I'm off this way. Yeah, it's it's definitely gets a little bit used to. For Bravo. Tower zero two three eight, hold short two four Bravo. Cessna two three eight, make right close traffic runway two four cleared for takeoff. Right close traffic two four cleared for takeoff two three eight. Up both trips. Uh, all right. Three eight three eight. Three eight Thirty-four. <sighs> Next one part's gonna be shooting approaches when they're in. Yeah. This not this not it's not that difficult.
Cessna 238, runway 24, clear to land. 24, clear to land, 3. Alright. Flaps 10, pull out that power. Flaps are fun. That's okay, I go power out. Airspeed. Watch airspeed. Oh. Third final. Back up. Let it come down. Let it float. You're about 55 right now, so add some power, just pitch the nose down a little bit. Hope you get some airspeed. I know, too much. Right here, you go power out. Alright, pretty good. Hold it off, alright. Pops coming up and we'll get off. We'll get off at Echo. Left at Echo. Day 023, we'll be getting off at Echo back to General. Cessna 238, taxi to General Aviation via Echo and Alpha. Via Echo, Alpha 238. Back up, clear right, clear left, good. Actually, anyway. Airport 2, proceed on Bravo and Delta, cross runway 24. Out of King Air came in? Yep, yeah, they come in here every once in a while. Got some rich, rich people in Fullerton. I'm sure, I'm sure when you did your private at John Wayne, you probably saw some cool jets over there too. Oh, all the time, yeah. That's what you flew with all the time. Yeah. Like turbulence was a major thing. I think I only got caught in it like once or twice. It was pretty scary. Just I got it, I got it to a student at Ontario. We were behind like a freaking like jumbo jet. My student didn't come in high enough and we definitely were getting rocked around a bit. Is the 9669 or whatever here it's new one? Oh, yeah, the white one? Yeah. Yeah, it's a new plane. What about the ZY? He said he got two, right? Yeah, he, I mean, he, he has another one coming in that's, uh, he's, it's in, it's in getting a paint job right now. She's ready to go in like three weeks. Uh, Zulu Yankee should be, he, he, he used it basically just for his girlfriend for training. Okay. Cessna 65647, right Fullerton here. Ground Taxi to the runway 24 run up area, the Alpha. It was right here. Oh. Oops. That's right, that's 157 spot. Oh, we need to tow it back, yeah, it's not a big deal. All right.